I paid nearly $40,000 for my Tesla solar panels and power wall. But the question is, did I pay too much money and is my solar panel array sufficient for my needs? What is my ROI? And most importantly, what does this mean for you? Divided by yearly savings, bam. Woo! Oh. Hey, my name is Ben and I have a mortgage on a home in San Diego where I have this $40,000 solar panel array which I paid for by rolling it into my mortgage when I refinanced. Was that a good decision? I'm making this video primarily in response to comments on my solar panel review and Powerwall bill analysis. Uh, the range in comments on those two videos varies remarkably. I've had people making fun of me for screwing myself over. And I've had people say that it's a no brainer decision that I'm benefiting from having power when the electricity goes out. And especially with energy costs always rising in Southern California, the system will surely pay for itself. And I've made a maybe a good decision. But the most common and neutral question is simply what is the ROI on my system? So for those of you who left me comments, Thank you so much for that and this video is for you. Tackling the question of the return on my investment is the purpose of this video, but my main objective is to give you information that you would need if you're in the market for solar or for those of you who already have solar to give you some honest numbers to just compare. At this point, I've been collecting data on my solar panel and energy production for almost two years now, so it's a good time to sit down and see if what I have measures up to what I was told when I made this purchase in the first place. Let's take a look. So the first thing we wanna do is take a look at the cost of the system. Here in my purchase agreement, you can see that it's split up in two parts. The solar array, which is about $30,000, and the storage, which was about $9,000. You can see how that's split up between equipment and installation and fees. All of this is subject to a 30% tax credit because it's a new photovoltaic system with a battery charged 100% of the time, like you can see in the boom agreement. The Powerwall will draw 100% of its charge from the solar array, which means after the tax credit, I'm paying $27,746.43. The next thing I have to do is figure out how much money I'm saving or earning by having solar panels. This is a little bit more complicated because really what I wanna know is how much money would I have spent if I did not have solar panels? And like you may have heard in my first video, uh, I had solar panels installed immediately when I started renovating my home after we purchased it. So I don't have any non-solar panel data to compare to. And even if I look at my bill, it's not much help because it's only showing my net usage, which is actually negative since I'm putting more power into the grid than I'm taking from it. Uh, however, I can use the Tesla app to figure out how much energy I'm using and what time of the day that I'm using it. Now, why does it matter when I use it? Well, because in San Diego, we have a time of use plan. My actual schedule of rates is way more complicated than that, and it varies between summer and winter. So I had to sit down, look at some data, and do some averaging. Basically, what I did was I went through and I took several samples of data from the Tesla app saying how much energy I used and when. I averaged that, and I put it inside of this uh, CSV, which I'm currently filling out right now. Here's what we're gonna do. We'll start by adding a few more columns, and this will be the summer cost for energy and the winter cost for energy. And so for winter cost, we'll take this amount of energy and we'll multiply it by the on-peak usage and we'll multiply that by the price that I pay for on-peak energy. And then we'll just add that to taking the same value, multiply it by the percentage of energy that's off-peak, multiplied by the price of on-peak energy, plus the amount of energy that is super off-peak, multiplied by the price of that off-peak energy, and $216, which is really a cool number to get because um, I believe that's consistent with what my bill is since I didn't have power uh, or since I didn't have panels at that time I believe my bills were about $200 each. Every other bill here is going to be theoretical because these were bills that were never paid. These are bills that my solar took care of for me. Alright so the total for summer and winter bills is the sum of 
all of that. And then the sum of all of that, which means dollars saved is the sum of my summer and winter bills. $4,051. And that means saved monthly is going to be this number up above divided by the number of months. $176 a month. Or do one more dollars saved a year equals uh, that number multiplied by 12. $2,113. Oh man, we're like gonna get the ROI right now. Oh, this is so great. Okay, so cost yearly savings 39 six three seven and seventy five cents but we want to take seventy percent of that with rebate or with credit it's not a rebate it's a credit and then yearly savings is bam and then payoff is bam credit divided by yearly savings bam Woo! Oh, it's gonna take 13 years to pay off. Oh man, that makes me think Tesla's expensive. Oh man, I've seen other numbers where like the price is uh, like way less. Okay, but check this out though. My panels, my solar array is worth 30,530. Oh, this is gonna make me so sad. Okay, so 30,000. 530. Okay, it would be 10 years for the panels alone. This is why people say you should install your own solar. I mean, look at that. The panels are worth $15,000. The installation, the permitting, and other fees. How much of that is installation? I saw in one of these YouTube videos that they charge like 100 to 200% of the cost of the panels to do the installation. So if I was to have $15,000 worth of just panels, 15,000 pop, pop, pop. Now, there we go. See, that's the kind of numbers that I've heard about, a five-year payoff time. Of course, that, I mean, I can't escape the permitting. That would have to go in there too. Man, that's kind of a bummer, right? Okay, so what do I get out of this? Well, it's going to take 13 years to pay off my solar. The next thing we got to look at, actually, is uh, the finance charge, right? Because I didn't drop $40,000 cash on this. No, 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 no. I put $40,000 cash in the stock market and I put the 40,000 into my mortgage and we have a rate that's like 3, 3.125%. Yeah, I'll just put it right here. 3.125%. And what I was paying before was 4.98%. So that was on a 20 year loan. This is a 30 year loan. So, man, I should just use a mortgage calculator. Loan amount. So, cost 27746. 27746. I only put in the amount after the 30% credit because truly. When we refinanced, we had already received our tax credit. So we weren't really refinancing with the true cost of the panels. We were refinancing after the tax credit, which made that a little bit better for us. And payoff rate, interest rate per year, 4.9998, sorry. And loan term in years, 20 years, calculate that cost. That was 43,008. Bam, that was this loan. And then if I do this one, same number, this rate, 3.125, 30 years, 
calculate 42,000. Oh man, you know what? I've calculated this number before, but I gotta admit, like I was like, man, what if I don't, what if I don't remember? What if it's actually more expensive? So I save like only a little bit of money on this lower interest rate but it's over a longer period of time. So my payments are actually less. You can see here the monthly payment uh, that I pay towards my mortgage that's actually paying off the um, uh, the panels is 118. Uh, so we'll say payment towards panels. That was $118 a month and 86 cents. And then over here is 182.80, 182.80. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to look at, which is this number right here, 5,000 kilowatt hours that I'm putting into the grid that I'm not using. How is that number so big? Well, look, I don't live in my house right now. I live in Japan because we're a military family. My wife is a dentist, and so we are over here, um, a dentist for the Navy. And so we're over here and we are renting out my house. One, we have two units. So one unit is for Airbnb. Another one we're currently renting to my sister-in-law, actually using less electricity while she's there. But there's also a really big factor that's missing. It's that while we've been gone, we haven't been charging our electric vehicle. So we have the capacity, as you can see, to charge our car at home. And still, like you'll hear it said that you want to plan ahead and you want to plan beyond your needs so that you can grow into your solar panels, as well as you want to be prepared for the degradation of your panels over the course of years. The amount of money that they produce in the beginning isn't going to be as much money as they produce in the end, which actually makes me want to look at one more thing. If we look at production, let's see if the amount of energy that's being produced uh, matches up with what Tesla says. Okay, so right here, it says the estimated system lifetime is 30 years and the annual electricity production decrease due to natural aging of the system is uh, half a percentage. I would imagine this is like a, an average expected decrease because between one year and another year, there's going to be the possibility of changes in weather, like one season can be rainier than another season. Okay. So here's what I've done. I've taken the total from all of the production, excluding April and May. And I've excluded April and May because in April and May of the following year, my panels were turned off while we installed a new roof. That's crazy. Okay. I produced more in the second year than the previous year. And I've actually taken a look at this uh, more than in more than one way, I've produced more energy. That's like wait, 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 no way, really? This is the take I'm gonna keep, I assume. But like that, I wasn't expecting that, right? I was expecting to see less production the following year. Instead, I have more production. The reason for that is, of course, due to weather. We probably had a rainier 2019 than a 2020. So that's not a, so much of a surprise. I just, I didn't, ex I didn't expect to see more. I guess this is, re obviously this is exciting, but clearly this is not an annual trend. My solar panels aren't going to improve from year to year. So if I check these numbers uh, five years from now, and I look at the average degradation over the course of those five years, I'm sure I'm gonna see an average decline. Uh, nevertheless, that's not bad. Like that's, that's exciting to see. So the last thing I wanna do is Let's look at an entire year and compare to the production that Tesla promised. But I'm just gonna go from first month of full production, like when the panels were on, include April and May through January. 11,096 kilowatt hours. And Tesla said that they expected 9,985 kilowatt hours. I'm just saying. This is what I paid for. 
And this is what I got. The warranty on these panels, boom, right there, 20 year warranty. So uh, definitely gonna pay itself off before the warranty is up, 13 years. Maybe that's not the best. Uh, however, I feel happy that I decided to finance the panels and invest the money. That ended up paying off as well. Um, as it is, we don't have an electric bill. Uh, we haven't had an electric bill since these were installed, since I made that review in the first place. And I feel pretty good about this. So I'm going to take this CSV and put it down for a download in the description. If you want to take a look at it, um, if you want to use it for your own purpose. Oh, you know what? There's so many more things I could play with here. I really like messing with data. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I keep making videos every week about innovation and uh, I often make videos about the work that I do, which is actually software development. So if you like that, if you're into it, subscribe. If not, that's fine. Just watch me whenever I appear in a search result. That's, I don't care what you subscribe to, dude. Uh, but, you know, support for the channel is appreciated. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye. I give you my heart.